together. A proof of concept was a DOT stroking of these remote gate valves. And as you can see in the distance, again, not a lot of infrastructure. There's not a lot of places to go when you need additional parts or anything to do. But if you look at the size of this valve, and I don't know how many people you in here are in the gas and oil industry, but if you look at the gentleman standing on top of that work platform, and you look at the guy standing on the ground, it kind of puts in perspective the size of that valve. Well, that valve is two stories high. And that's a typical remote gate valve for 48-inch pipeline. So in the wintertime, in the fall, in the spring, getting a guy on top of that valve creates a hazard within itself. So as our workforce started to age, part of the way we started to use PI was in some decision trees, and I'm sure everyone in this room has done risk analysis at one time or not. So we started using ACE a little bit differently. We tried to use ACE in a decision tree process and still collect engineering data, maintenance data, and solve a DOT requirement. Here's what it looks like. We bring it into a SharePoint front end where that every data stream that we have available to us, whether it comes from an Oracle database, SQL database, PI system, uh, maintenance management system, all of that data comes into this SharePoint site. And for regulatory PMs, whether they're DOT strokes or um, gas line vo uh, valves that just need a functioning test, they come into this thing we call the event viewer. Okay? In this event viewer, it has the ability to not only find the event that solves the DOT requirement, it, whether that happened during a process upset, a scheduled pipeline shutdown, or even the operator stroking that valve to satisfy that. So DOT people out here, valve stroke, seven and a half months, twice a year, not to see that seven and a half months, right? Well, this calculation is so smart that it knows the last time that valve was stroked, right? It knows when it needs to be stroked again, and we get a notification saying this valve did not meet any of the criteria. There was no shutdown. There was no process upset. We need to schedule this. It shows up on our all asset backlog, which is our forecast. When it does stroke, here is the details account of these. And so I didn't mention this earlier. These are a DC compound motor, right? So voltage is very important on a DC compound motor because it has a direct impact on valve travel speed. And so when you, a valve travels too fast on a pipeline this size, depending on the hydraulic gradient, it can rupture the pipeline. So knowing how fast that valve travel is a critical value to us. We've moved all of them variables into analysis framework. We run the ACE calculation and it draws the information out of analysis framework. And this satisfies all our maintenance and engineering requirements. The piece that goes to the DOT is the actual capture of the event. So the vertical lines represent the uh, limit switches on the valves. The, the blue line on top of that represents the voltage for that stroke. And the purple line, of course, is the current that the DC compound motor um, drew. Now, if there's an anomaly or God forbid one of these says it needs additional review. The, the team that sits in their diagnostic center will ad hoc this, and they can toggle just from that one event, when it happened, before it happened, and after it happened, to see if there was a problem in one of the little turbines, if there's a problem in the battery storage, or wherever the issue is. Had this not had an anomaly, I'm going to show you where this goes. This passes over to our work management system here where we've brought out through some SQL views and merged into SharePoint. And that calculation that passed is so smart. Now, I'm going to tell you here, share a little secret with us. We have, on average, one million man hours of work at any one time on the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, not including the Valdez Marine Terminal. So this calculation is so smart that for those of you who know what a priority three regulatory PM is, you have a 30-day window from due date to satisfy that PM. Well, these calculations know that it has seven and a half months, 
has to be twice a year, and it goes in and it finds itself on the work management schedule, populates it on these blank columns here on the left, and says, this has been completed by a calculation, do not schedule, and it's closed out automatically and then automatically drops off the schedule. Had there been an anomaly with the valve stroke, it would have automatically be routed in disposition by engineering. So it's taken a lot of the work out for us on where do we spend our time looking at anomalies? Do we search all of Pi looking for things that may solve the problem? Do we look for things that may have an upset or a problem in it? We've com automated that entire process. So the next thing we did was we took modular database, which you know we're about ready to roll into AF, which I'm sure a lot of you folks are, but we mimic it to look like our equipment hierarchy for our work management system. So when the data has to pass from the Pi system to the work management system, it's as close to a one-to-one -one as we could put it. And so if you had a problem, passing it over to creating a work order or a, a work request, a supplemental, it's just a couple of mouse clicks. If you needed to do additional analysis with uh, the personnel in the field, I selected a Siemens TG here as a representation of that. And so what we've done is we've landed on utilizing AutoCAD drawings brought into process book with a DXC plugin. Because the guys in the field sometimes don't have internet access. They don't have all the tools that we would have in, uh, in, a, in a city like Anchorage or Fairbanks. And so by utilizing the AutoCAD drawings, the guys in the field that is calling you from a radio or for phone via satellite now has the ability to look at the same drawings that we're looking at. And so when the drawing system updates, it up, we update all these screens that you see here for Pi. Now all the analog values, this happens to be temperature, and I know it's probably difficult to read there, it may even be blurry. But we can select any of them and we can do ad hoc trends on them. So if someone says, hey, I'm looking at transmitter on TG1 and I, I, I've got an exhaust temperature or bearing temperature just not making any sense, we're looking at the same drawing, we can grab it, we can take it and do an ad hoc trend off of it and, and communicate that instantly to the team.